What do you do when you fail to reach a goal? What happens if you don't get that score on the AP exam that you were hoping for? Or you fail a test? Or you don't make the team? Or you don't get into your dream college? In this video, I'm gonna give you some specific things that you should think about and try if you fail to reach that goal you were really hoping to achieve. Whether it's a small thing, like a grade on a particular assignment in one class, or a big thing that you've latched all of your dreams onto. It's really important to talk about what happens when you don't meet those goals that you've worked so hard for. Or maybe not so hard. Let's get started. So first of all, you may have heard this before, but failure can be a good thing. Now, I'm sure it feels devastating right now, especially if you're watching this video and you feel like you failed your test or you didn't get something that you were really hoping for. But the earlier on in your career as a student or a professional that you learn to fail and struggle, the better off you'll be later when you reach harder struggles and you know what strategies you need to work on to get beyond those failures. Students who never fail or struggle at high school are gonna be the ones who have the hardest time in college when they finally get to the places where they are struggling. That's why it's good to try hard things no matter where you are in your academic or professional career. But failure sucks. <laughs> I have failed at plenty of my own personal endeavors in life and I'll share a few of those failures in this video. So the first thing to do when you fail to reach a goal, whether that's academic or personal, like getting a particular score on an SAT or finishing a race in a particular time, that first thing you should do is to evaluate the timeline of your goal. Now I've made other videos about setting academic goals and how to set good goals. And one of the strategies I recommend is giving yourself a specific timeline to reach your goal. And sometimes that timeline's out of your hands. For example, you have to take a test on a particular day, or if there's a big race or sporting event coming up and you can't change the deadline. But if the timeline is up to you, you can decide whether or not you want to extend that timeline and keep trying for your goal. If the timeline is out of your hands, think about other opportunities where you could still attempt that goal, just maybe next year or next month. For example, if you have the money, you can take the SAT again at a later date. If you don't make the sports team this year, you could try out again next year. A personal story that I'll share with you about extending the timeline is that I am a runner, I have run many marathons, but since COVID and work and life got in the way, since 2020, my fitness has dropped off significantly. So this past year, I decided I was going to try the longest distance that I had run in over five years to get back in shape. So I was going to run a half marathon. I worked on my training plan. I followed it really closely, feeling great. I wasn't getting injured. And then all of a sudden I had a misstep. I fell and I bruised my tailbone. It was a literal pain in the butt. And this was a week before the race. I was so hurt that I was worried I wouldn't be able to finish the distance without being in extreme pain. And so race weekend, I went and I dropped my distance down from the half marathon to the 8K. But then I extended my timeline and signed up for another half marathon about a month later. I kept my fitness levels up, I extended my training plan, and then finally a month down the road, I finished the half marathon and achieved my goal. So even though it wasn't on the deadline that I had hoped it would be, I still reached it and I didn't give up after the frustrating injury that made me want to drop out of the race. A lot of people feel like they have to be on a very specific timeline in order to achieve everything they want out of life. And even though it may seem like everyone's moving forward ahead of you or at a different timeline, it is okay if you vary from that timeline a little bit. Think about how important that time-based goal is to you and if you can just extend the time or try again at a later date. Which brings me to my second strategy, which is try again. Now I've already mentioned things like retaking the SAT or trying out again for the team or the play, but there are often other ways when it feels like you don't have an opportunity to try again to actually try again. For example, you could ask your teacher if they offer retakes for an exam. You could retake an AP exam. It's not really recommended and it's very expensive, but you could take another stab at AP biology if you don't get the score that you want because you really, really, really want that college credit down the road when you get past high school. If you don't make your fall sports team, there's a time to try again in the winter or in the spring or again in the summer for next year. If you failed for a whole month at your personal goal of journaling or going to sleep at an earlier time, it's okay, just reset the clock and try again the next month. Every day is a new chance to start over and to try another opportunity. Now, if your teacher doesn't offer retakes or taking a big standardized test again is completely out of your hands, you can still take the lessons from your failure and apply them to other opportunities in the future. So my third tip for when you fail to reach a goal is to consider the prep you put in to reaching that goal. Did you have a set action plan in mind? Did you give yourself too little time to prepare? Did you not make micro goals along the way to help you reach that bigger goal? By evaluating what you did along the way 
to get to that goal and seeing where you went wrong will allow you to make a better plan in the future for similar goals or for reaching that same goal again. As a runner, whenever I'm training for a big race, I write down my full training plan and then I document what I do every single day. That way I can see how well I stuck to my running plan. And if it doesn't work out for me, I can see what I can do to tweak it for the next race cycle that I'll be training for. The same thing can go for study plans or smaller personal goals. Now, there may be big things that seem like you can never try again at. For example, you don't get into your dream college. Well, there is always the opportunity once you're in college to apply again and transfer, or maybe find success at a different college or university and then try your dream school again for grad school. Adjust your timeline and don't be afraid to deviate from the norm. If you had an AP exam that you didn't study much for, maybe there's an opportunity to take another AP course next year and you now know what you shouldn't do to prep for that exam. Or if you're a senior in high school, you're done with AP exams, now you can take what you learned about preparing for the AP exams and apply it to your college exams once you get there. And sometimes there's external factors that you have nothing to do with that throw you off track. Think about everything you did wrong. But don't blame yourself too much because maybe the goal itself was what was wrong. So my fourth tip here when you fail to reach a goal is to evaluate the goal. Think about why you wanted it in the first place. What was it that made you wanna reach this goal? Was it an idea of yourself that you hoped to reach? Was it external pressure that you felt? Was your goal even really worth achieving? Now, this isn't to say whenever you fail, you should say, well, I didn't really want it in the first place. Of course you wanted something, that's why it was a goal. But think about the ideas surrounding your goal. Did you want a five on that AP exam, just to say you got a five? Or did you want the college credit so that you could start college with a few credits under your belt and move forward into higher level courses in that domain? Maybe you did, and maybe taking a dual enrollment course might be worth it over the summer before you start college. Or maybe talking to a college advisor can help you go on the right path so that you can get all your prerequisites ready for medical school and get into the med schools that you want. If you think about colleges and universities and you don't get into your dream school, this happened to me. My heart was set on Columbia University in New York City since I was a junior in high school. And so of course I applied and I did not get in. It hurts not getting into your dream school. I also applied to Barnard, which is a sister school to Columbia University, also located in New York City. And in the end, even though I got into Barnard, after a lot of thought, I realized that the idea of Columbia and Barnard was great, but it wasn't the schools itself that I wanted. It was being and living in New York City. So I ended up going to a wonderful university that was a really good fit for my interests and goals. And I kept that goal in the back of my mind of wanting to move to New York City one day. I think I ended up at a wonderful option for myself, go heels. But I did consider Columbia again for grad school. And so I applied and guess what? I failed again. I didn't get in for grad school either, but I reconsidered what I wanted so much about the goal. Of course, I felt devastated, but what I really, really wanted was to start my life in New York City. So that same year when I was denied from Columbia's grad school program, I got a job in New York instead, and I moved my life up to New York City, where it was everything that I hoped it would be. And it was in the end much better for my professional path and I didn't have to spend a much of money on grad school. I realized it was much better to be somebody living and working in New York City than it was to be a student in New York City with little to no money. So in the end, I got what I wanted. It just wasn't in the same form as the original goal that I had. Setting hard goals is commendable. And if you don't reach them, that's okay. I have some go-to motivational videos that I'll link in the description below that are about struggle and failure and perseverance when you don't meet those goals. One's from Casey Neistat and another is from the comedians Garfunkel and Oates. Both have a little language in them, but they're fantastic videos and I encourage you to give them a watch. And the last that I'll leave you with is that goals and dreams can change and it's always up to you to decide what's important. Thanks so much for watching. Give this video a like if it's been helpful and I'll see you later.